The Fabia is Skoda's offering to the Super Mini segment and it has nearly 30 direct rivals. However, in this estate form, it's almost a unique proposition, adding a huge boot into the mix. Already one of the most rounded cars on the market, the Fabia Estate offers a significant practicality boost over just about all of its rivals and is one of the cheapest estate cars money can buy. The engine selection is pretty much the same as the hatchback. You should avoid the entry-level MPI petrols, which are a bit sluggish, but the TSI turbocharged petrols and 1.4 litre diesels are good in any form. The higher powered 1.4 litre diesel makes the most sense though. Ride quality is better than the hatchback, only really getting harsh on rough surfaces. Otherwise, it's stable and sure-footed. The handling is good too, with enough steering feedback to keep you informed, and it's light enough so you can place it accurately. It's very easy to control both around town and on the open road. As with the hatchback, the cabin noise depends on the engine. The three-cylinder petrols send quite a bit of vibration into the cabin, while the diesels are noisy at idle and under duress. The TSI petrols are the quietest option, and all versions are well isolated from road noise. There's plenty of room in the front with a wide range of seat and steering wheel adjustments, meaning it's easy to get comfortable. The seats though could be more supportive, especially if you do long distance driving. Visibility is good all round with the extra length of the estate not really affecting rear visibility. Front and rear parking centers are optional right from the entry level car with the rears added as standard from SE grade. Even the most basic Fabia estate comes with DAB radio, Bluetooth and USB connectivity. But if you opt for the SE trim, then you get alloy wheels, air conditioning and a better multimedia system. So it's worth paying the extra. Navigation isn't standard on any model, but can be added as an option. It's not an especially exciting interior though. It's neatly put together and solidly built, but it's all black and gray textured plastics. It's sensible and functional rather than stylish, but it feels built to last. The Fabia already excels at space and the estate improves on that. Front seat occupants enjoy more head and leg room than many of its rivals and in the back you can fit three in comfort, albeit for very short journeys. It's the boots where the big news is. The estate has a 505 litre load bay with all of the seats up and a huge 1,395 litres with them down. Like the hatchback, the folded rear seats leave a step up, but you can opt for a variable boot floor that makes the floor flat from back to front. There's a lot of practical touches, including myriad storage points, a parking ticket holder and a load bay cover. The door pockets are a good size too. There is a little wrinkle in the Fabia's value for money. The estate does cost a lot more than the standard hatchback, but when you think about what you get, it's still an affordable proposition. SE versions have the best value in terms of equipment. All models have good emissions and economy, and there's several options that qualify for free road tax. As a brand, Skoda compares well with many of its rival manufacturers when it comes to customer satisfaction surveys, and the Fabia in particular is a strong performer, particularly when it comes to reliability. The estate hasn't specifically been tested by Euro NCAP, but the hatchback received a five-star rating in 2014. All Fabias come with six airbags, a tyre pressure monitoring system, an electronic stability control programme, and Isofix child seat fixings on the outer rear seats. Very little can rival the Fabio Estate's blend of flexibility, comfort, ease of use, and value. It's a fantastic choice if you want a small, practical car. For more information, search for the Skoda Fabio Estate on whatcar.com, and to keep up to date with all our latest video road tests, click subscribe.